Now, was there no potential with your proposal conflict of interest that somebody who once worked for you will now determine how, uh, where such large amounts of money between $200,000 and $2 million will now be funneled in terms of the SME selection process? So, excellent set of questions, and I'll just address them, you know, um, pointedly in, in the short time we have. First, like I said, at the time we came in, because the project had problems and was not being well implemented, World Bank agreed that we needed to be, you know, bring in, that we needed to bring in capacity. You know, we needed to bring in capacity in terms of management capacity and went through a due process in which eight people applied, right? The top person who should have... Um, been, who should have done the job, and I'm sure he won't mind my mentioning his name, Patrick Okibo is his name, you know him. You might know Patrick, he's here in Abuja. Patrick was a candidate, talk to him. Patrick basically turned down the job, right? Ugoi Kemba came second. Ugoi Kemba worked for Capital Alliance, which is a leading investment firm. I happen to have been the CEO and a founder, one of the founders. But it's a bit like saying because somebody worked with you or went to school with you that he cannot, you know, um, uh, apply for it. He applied and was the second person and, and got the job. Now. Remember that that process of him getting a job, he's one of several people that are part of a team. So that's point number one in terms of the due process of how he got the job that he got as a project coordinator, right? And I maintain that he was qualified for the job and got it on his own merit. And I think the World Bank will say the same thing if you ask them. And by the way, when people make these sort of allegations, I think, you know, if you have the time, you should, it won't take you one on one phone call for you to talk to the World Bank or anybody else. And they'll tell you the process they went through. So, um, I, I think that's that. Now, on the second point about the program, like I said to you, because we had not achieved the impact we wanted, an agreement was made to change how the money will be applied. To instead of just grants, which is basically money you give away, and there is no, you know, just free, right? To include an equity window, right? And then also to have this part that is for capacity building that will be used to pay consultants or, and so on. That's a framework that was agreed. It has not even been implemented. Mm. You know? So to say that like that framework implies you know, that um, Mr. Ugo Ikemba would divert the money is basically, first of all, assuming that he has powers he doesn't have. He's not even there today. The contract with, was, was not even renewed. It expired in February, March, and it wasn't renewed. And part of the reason why we didn't renew it was simply for this, to avoid this controversy and focus on getting the work done. Because you know, there was a lot of focus on his, him as an individual and why you know, he was um, proposing this. But he wasn't the one making the proposals. They were coming from the World Bank. It's a classic case of trying to shoot the messenger. You know? And I'm not sure, even up to today, why the honorable member and others think it is better you know, to give away money as grants rather than having an equity. By the way, the Minister of Finance, who is also the signatory to this agreement, prefers the other way. I mean, he, she wants the balance to shift more, and I'll say rightly so, into more sustainable... Well, even, even if, even if the, the debate comes down to the issue of whether or not it should be equity or just sheer grants to people, I think mm -hmm. the, question, the, the kind of issue in question comes up that if you're talking about a, 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 a project that was essentially envisaged to impact 4,000 SMMEs, and you're taking a significant portion of that to benefit only 25, even if it's well intended. Uh, the, the, the question of you know, spreading the, 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 the potential you know, contribution to various SMEs for wider impact for the economy to grow. I mean, what do you have to say about that idea that even if, even if it's equity, why not let that equity go to 4,000 instead of 25? I understand your point very well, and I'll tell you, that's why, again, you know, when people don't understand a subject, they make assumptions that are wrong. Remember that 25 companies may impact more than 4,000 people. It's like saying, I'd rather deal with 4,000 individuals than deal with 25 companies. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it means you have to get into the company, how many people does he employ, what does he do, mm -hmm. how many suppliers does he have. To say you should not empower companies by giving them equity and just give grants to individuals, you know, solely, is a choice. But I think it will be an unsound choice, you know. So the whole idea is that in addition to individuals, give money to companies as well, which then empower individuals and empower suppliers and empower you know, sectors, right? Because these companies will belong to sectors. And that's really what the equity window is supposed to do. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Very quickly, Honorable Minister, let me ask you about the, uh, these, uh, these uh, special economic labs that have been going on around the country. I know the ERGP is said to have established these labs of collaboration around the country. What has been the result of those labs? And can you break down a little bit for our viewers how it works? Yes, so first, the name is Focus Labs. And it's an idea that came out of Malaysia. Malaysia 
did something quite impressive. Basically, the government realized that, just like I was asked earlier, that if they had to build out all the infrastructure and investments that the economy required to create the employment and the economy, that it would take a very long time. So what they did was to invite all the stakeholders and players and investors who were interested in investing in, the con in their country with the relevant government officials at the highest levels and brought them together in a room or in a place and literally, at least according to them, locked them up there and said, you're not leaving until we understand what the issues are. That's what they call the focus lab. And we agree how to solve them. And we enter into an agreement in writing, right, that we will go through those things. We will identify what government has to do, what you have to do to de bottleneck, you know, take away the bottlenecks and all that. And they attracted, I think, um, I understand over $400 billion, obviously over maybe a 10-year cycle, but they did it over and over again. So we liked the idea, and we said we will use the same method because we have similar problems here where lots of people want to invest in Nigeria, and they say one thing or the other is stopping the investment. So the initial focus labs, which was focused on, um, I think we, we chose three areas. Um, there was energy and gas, there was um, processing and sort of manufacturing, which I was part of, and there was agriculture and transport, right? And the whole idea is projects in those areas that required where the private sector and other players want to invest, where there are things militating or stopping those investments, that we can come together, and that's the focus lab that was held in Abuja, you know, to agree on what can be done to remove those bottlenecks. And I think um, there are commitments of over 20 billion. That those should be to... issues around land, uh, civil it service It could be land, uh, yes, approvals, land, permits, you know, and so on and so forth. But things government can do, and where we are agreeing that it's in our mutual interest to do it, because it will unlock investment, unlock employment. And so the point to make is also it's not one-off. You don't do it once. So we've done the first set, and there's a team, like you said, that are part of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, um, there is a group of people that are just dedicated to trying to follow up on this. We had a steering committee meeting, I think, last week again, or before we went to China, where we took stock where we were, and uh, we are continuing to collaborate on it. And I would say so far it's been a success. Well, we hope to bring you on again at some point to, you know, perhaps explain a bit more because we have a lot of viewers who are interested in what you're saying. And uh, we also have a number of questions. Sadly, we're not able to take uh, as many as we would love to take. But we have to thank you for coming on Sunrise Elite this morning. Thank you. Um, Mr. Okichuku Inilama is the Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment. Our Sunrise Elite continues about now with uh, Chimbling and Nyota in Lagos.